everybody. Welcome to Sunday worship. Let's get started with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for just another Sunday that you have given to us, God. Um, whether we know it or not, um, you have brought this week to us. Um, you have just let us get through our days. You have let us fight our demons and just make it to another Sunday, Lord. So we thank you for that. And God, I pray that as we are about to give you worship right now, that we would be able to give you a good worship, that you would just be present in just both the praise and the message, Lord. And I pray that you ready our hearts for all that you are about to do, all that you will do, and all that you have done. We thank you. pray all of this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Even if I ran away, your love never fails. I know I still make mistakes, but you have new mercies for me every day. Your love never fails. And you stay the same through the ages. Your love never changes. There may be pain in the night, but joy comes in the morning. And when the oceans rage, I don't have to be afraid, because I know that you love me. Your love never fails. Strong and the water steep, but I'm not alone here in these open seas. Your love never fails. The chasm is far too wide. I never thought I'd reach the other side. Your love never fails. Stay the same through the ages. Your love never changes. There may be pain in the night, but joy comes in the morning. And when the oceans rage, I don't have to be afraid because I know that you love me. Your love never fails. Your love never fails. You made all things work together for my good. You made all things. Work together for my good. You make all things work together for my good. You make all things work together for my good. And you stay the same through the ages. Your love never changes. Pain in the night, but joy comes in the morning. And when the oceans rage, I don't have to be afraid because I know that you love me. Your love never fails. Your love never fails.
I don't deserve it 
God, thank you for this day. Thank you for keeping everyone safe. I pray that everyone has a good worship. Send us your Holy Spirit to guide us and help us to learn to work as one for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Praise Team and Justin, for opening up our hearts for worship. Uh, two weeks of school has already been done. So if someone forgot to tell you guys, I just want to say I think you guys are doing a fantastic job. I know it's hard to do things virtually, to sit on the computer. It's exhausting. I've done it, but I just want to let you know that I'm so proud of you. Hang in there and try to have fun and enjoy your time with your friends, even if it's on a distance a learning platform and also with your teachers. Um, it's kind of everyone's trying to learn this thing and hopefully we can, you know, continue on this journey together. So hopefully soon we will get to meet in person and talk about it and talk about our challenges, but also talk about what we learned throughout all of this um, because God is good and God has good things in store. Um, let's continue to dive deeper. Today we will actually concluding, be concluding our series on verses. So first week we talked about light versus dark. And one of the things I think I repeated was sin is a sin is a sin, right? And once we accept Jesus Christ, we must, not we may, if you want to, we must walk in this light that Jesus has uh, given to us. And also we talked about truth versus lie. There's no such thing as a partial truth or a silent truth, but Jesus is the truth. And if we come across our sins and we feel like we cannot come forward to God, he gives us a promise in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. It says, you know what? He will forgive us. He's merciful and just if we confess our sins. He will also help us to purify from all the unrighteousness. Um, and that is a promise that uh, Jesus has given to us. And we want to make sure that we live out this truth so that we don't make God and Jesus a liar, but we live out the truth, which is depicted in Jesus himself. Also, last week we talked about God versus world, and we know that at the end God will prevail. But, but we also learned as we die, kind of dove deeper that the ruler of the world is someone that we really can't challenge. I mean, Satan knows you better than you think. Satan knows all your weaknesses and all your vulnerabilities, and Satan will use whatever it can to break our relationship with our Savior because it knows that it, it is not going to prevail. It knows that it, the, the battle that it's fighting has already been lost. And so whatever will hurt our God's heart, that's what it's going to try to do. And so we want to make sure that we understand, though, that the one in us, is greater than the one in the world. And through this, we have power, we have the ability to overcome the temptations, the Satan that tries to rule and ruin our lives. And I hope when you think about God versus world, we are part of the God side. We are fighting against Satan with the Lord. And I hope that gives you a lot of comfort and just a lot of encouragement. You know, there has been a lot of bad news in the last six, seven months, and there's continuing to be bad news. I mean, just news that you think, like, is this for real? Is this really happening in the United States and in the world? And you read it over and over. Um, I read various, a variety of news from CNN, um, New York Times, you know, just to, because I'm in disbelief. Like, I can't believe those things are happening. But I just want to let you guys know that, yes, there is a lot of bad things happening, but let's not overlook the good things that are happening. There is a pandemic, but there is also people recovering from it. There's also people coming back in health and in helping, you know, to develop a vaccine. There is hatred, but there is also love that is being shared in the world. There are places where our missionaries, our Christian brothers and sisters are sharing not only their food, but our intellectual assets, uh, just having fellowship, being there for one another so that people are not lonely. So there is love going on. I know the news and whatever articles we read, we're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe all these things are happening. But there are a lot of good things that are happening as well. We don't want to focus our minds and our lives on the bad negativity because that's exactly what Satan wants to do, like distract us and make us feel like we're living in the dark. You know, what good is out there? But, you know, I just want us to focus on the light and all the good things that are going on around the world, around our family and our communities. Um, there is a pandemic going on. We're not going to ignore that. But that's why we as warriors are going to be in prayer. 
and continue to uh, just extend the kingdom in many different ways. So before we dive deeper and cover our last part of our series in verses, Kylie's going to read the scriptures for us, and I'll be back. 1 John chapter 4, verse 10 to 12. This is love. Not that we loved God, but He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and His love is made complete in us. So today we're covering love versus hate. As we close up the book of 1 John, um, I kind of wanted to end with this because if we think about it, you know, when we dove deeper into the light, we can kind of define that light is Jesus, right? Truth is Jesus. And when we think about Jesus coming to this world to destroy Satan, that was his ultimate goal, right? To give us eternal life, to bond that relationship that was broken, and to destroy Satan. Um, we know that love versus hate is, kind to, is going to kind of close um, and we need to know where we stand. You know, before we do that, let's kind of define love. We define love in many different ways. And uh, let's talk about the love between people. So the first one we can talk about is love between our friends, right? Um, we think our friends are some of our best friends. They're there for life. And, you know, we have really good friends that watches out for us. We have really good friends that really takes care of us. I don't have a lot of friends because I'm not like a social butterfly, but the few friends that I have in many different age range, including someone who's like my mom's age, I do have a friend about my mom's age that we are super, I'm super close to. Um, we do have a lot of friends that we're close to. But the sad thing is that it is very temporary. And today we can be close um, to the point where like, you know, I will die for you, you know. But something happens, a misunderstanding, Satan creates a division, and we are no longer friends. So we know that we do have good friends, but it's very temporary, and it could actually, we could lose friendships as well. I'm not sure if you had friends in your lives that you thought you were close to, and almost instantaneously something happens, and you're no longer friends. I've had that experience, and it was very, very painful. My heart was broken. Um, but the love between friends is great, but we know that's temporary, right? Maybe another greater love is love between family members, right? Um, if you ask me, Ms. Jin, you know, would you die for your boys? Without even thinking about it, I would say yes. If you ask my husband, he'd probably say, oh, yeah, of course. If they can live and I die, I will. Um, there was this cute story that I read a while ago. It was a little girl who was age six, and she had a terminal illness. And the only way that she could be cured of this illness was to get a blood transfusion from her younger brother, um, who actually created his own antibody. So this girl is six, so her younger brother was four years old, right? So when the, um, he, you know, he had to give his blood transfusion, so I'm sure the mom or the doctor, someone explained. So, you know, he was sitting down with the doctor, getting his, you know, getting the needle and, you know, get, trying to, you know, give his blood. And at one point while he was sitting there, he asked the doctor, doctor, how many minutes is it going to take for me to die, right? And the doctor was like, excuse me? He's like, how long is it going to take for me to die as you take my blood? And so the doctor was kind of confused as to what was going on. Long story short, this little boy who was four, when he sat down on the chair to give his blood to his sister who was dying, he literally thought he's going to give all his blood and he was going to die to make his sister live. Right? So beautiful. I think our family's love between each other is, is a little bit deeper. We really love our families unconditionally. But here's the flip side. I don't want to be the, you know, the negative person this morning. But the truth is, we do have family out there that hate each other. Like, I know of siblings that literally, I know both of the siblings, like the brother and the sister. And I kind of talked to them when I was in my college years. But the one brother will not talk to the sister, and the sister will not talk to the brother. And I'm close with both of them, and I'm like, well, what's up with this? And they're like, I just hate him, and I just hate her. And I'm like, wow, right? We do have parents who don't want their child 
or really literally like hate their children for, for whatever reason. They abuse them, they disown them, they throw them away in rubbish can. I mean, it's sad, but you know, even the love between family members is not unconditional and it's not forever. Um, I tell you guys that I would do anything for my boys. I would, you know, die for them. But there are times when they do things that are not lovable, right? So it's sad because we're humans. Um, yeah, there's a limit to what we can do. Um, then there is also love between your significant other, right? Like it's usually like the love that I'm talking about is, you know, love between husband and wives. But once you get your boyfriend and girlfriends, you think, yep, I'm going to marry him. I'm going to marry her, right? You think, yep, she's it. He's it. And, you know, I hope and pray that the one you do meet, hopefully when you're like age 25 or 30. No, I'm just kidding. Maybe not 30. Like after 20, after you graduate you know, college, I always tell my boys, yeah, I have a girlfriend when you're, you know, done with high school, and they look at me like, funny, like, what, right, but anyways, I hope the one you meet is the one that you will marry, but, you know, these days, they say, oh, you know, just have boyfriend and girlfriend, you know, and it's okay, and I guess now that, you know, um, I think about it, I guess it's okay, but as long as you can still stay pure, right, to yourselves before God, but even that love, you think, oh, yeah, it's just so unconditional. You know, when I used to date my husband or when we were dating, I thought, oh, my God, he's going to be the, my, my prayer has been answered, you know, and whatnot. But once we get married and live together, it's a whole different world, right? We have so much expectation and we have so many things that we want him or her to do for us. And even the love between spouses are very conditional. And that's why on the flip side, you see what? You see couples getting a divorce, right? Some couples that I hear like live together for 50 years, that's like half a century, and they get a divorce. And I'm like, wow, how does that work? For 50 years, you lived with one person, and you decided at one point that, nope, this person was not going to be it, right? That's, uh, that's kind of traumatizing, but love between even significant others is very, very conditional and very limited. Basically, what I'm trying to say is love between friends, family, your spouses is very temporary and it'll go away. I'm sorry, but that's the truth. We want it to last, but it won't last because love between human to human is very, very hard by itself. Then let's flip. Let's talk about hate. What, what, what is hate? Hate between people, right? Hate can drive us to the point where we engage in actions that we can't even imagine, that we don't even want to imagine. Uh, hate makes us to kill, right? Hate makes us to hate because we're different. People hate because they think that they are sitting in the seat of a judge. They think they are above everyone, including God himself, and that's why they can hate. Because hate is a very controlling thing, right? I hate you because da da da. That means I don't like what you're doing and I want to control you, right? So hate is a very, very strong word. I rarely use the word hate. If I don't like something, I'm like, I don't like it. But I never say I hate you because to me, I hate you means I, I don't like you to a point where I could actually kind of commit, like, murder, right? So if we know the story of Cain and Abel, right? Cain hated Abel, and what happened? That was, like, the first murder, right, in, 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 in human history, probably, that's recorded in the Bible. And Cain hated Abel, why? Because he did not give his best to God, and he didn't like the fact that Abel gave his best, and he wanted to control it. He didn't like the fact that his brother was out of his own control. When we hate things or when we hate people, it's because we cannot control them. And if you think about it, why would we control anyone? We can't even control ourselves, right? But we begin to hate because it's a control issue. So what happens is Cain kills Abel. But do you know in Genesis chapter 4, verse 7, it says what? Why don't we read it together? Ready, begin. If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. This was a warning given to Cain when he was having these hatred feelings, like when he was really going to do something bad. You know, God always, always works for us and not against us. So when that was going on, God gave Cain a fair warning. You know what, dude, watch out. 
there, there's sin right crouching at your door. When you think of crouching, what do you think of, right? Like a robber, a thief, like just waiting to just take action. But you know what? You can take over it, and you have the power within yourself to overcome it. Sadly, uh, Cain, Cain couldn't, so he did commit um, murder. But whenever we're in that situation of trying to hate people or hate things, you know, God always gives us warning, be careful. You are, you're trying to take my seat. It's not about you. You cannot take control and try to do things. Everything that's going on in the world, um, even within ourselves, think about it. And it's probably because we're trying to take control of something. Um, I hope and pray that when you think about hatred, that, you know, it's really Satan trying to distract us and confuse us. You know, think about the things you hate, right? Like, I hate my mom, let's say, right? Think about that. Do you really hate your mom or your brother or your teacher or your sister? Or do you think it's Satan really trying to deceive you because you forget all the great things that they did to you and you only remember that one time that he or she did something bad to you and you're like, I hate her, right? You think about it. Because Satan has a really, really good way of deceiving. That's what he is, master of lies, father of lies, right? Master of deception. Um, the reason why I'm kind of expounding on this whole hatred thing is, you know, I don't know if you would agree with me, but hating takes a lot of energy. How many of you honestly had time where you were so mad, you hated that person, you lost sleep, you lost appetite, and you, you like got depressed because you hated that person, and come to find out, that person didn't even know you were mad. That person didn't even know you were suffering. They're like, ooh la la la, like just having fun. And you're like, what? Right? Hating takes a lot of energy out of you. And that's what Satan's trying to do. When you use all that energy to hate, we cannot praise the Lord. When we use all our energy to hate, we cannot love our brothers and sisters. When we use all that energy to hate, we cannot walk in the light because light and darkness cannot mix. Love versus hate. We know the right answer. You know, in this time of age, everybody knows the right answer. But do we really obey the right answer? I think that's the big question. Now let's talk about um, diving deeper. Love between Jesus, right? Um, there was a part of the verse that Kylie read and something that I was meditating on throughout the week, and I could not go on. And it was just the beginning of the verse, and this is the verse. Let's read it together slowly. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. One sentence, one verse, but I could not pass the part that said, not that we loved God, but that he loved us. The fact that he loved us first. He purposely went out, came down, sought out, looked for us, me, looked for you, and wanted to say, I love you. Not I love you all, but I love you, Ethan. I hope you're doing well and you feel good. I love you, Aaron. I love you, Eunice and Chua, who's starting freshman in high school. I hope it all went well. All of you guys who are starting like middle school or high school, I'm sorry I cannot name you all, but I hope you're doing well. I know some of you guys are going to school in person, but you know what? God said, I love you. And he came down to us first, before we even knew of God. Whether it was through a revival, whether it was through your parents taking you to church, for whatever reason, God sought you out first. And that's the amazing grace. And you know what? It goes actually bigger than that. The reason why I couldn't go on to the latter part of the verse is not that he first loved us, but in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it says this. Let's read it together. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. So God not only found us to say, I love you, even before we knew him, but I love you even when you were sinners. God never... A God's love is never conditional. Okay, I love you. I got you. But, but wait, 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 wait. Don't come. You need to repent. 
You need to cleanse yourself. You need to get rid of all your desires and lusts of the world. You cannot do this. You cannot do that. Okay. I don't know if you're ready, but nah, I don't know. Maybe it'll take 70 years, but then you can come. No. God looked for you and said, I love you even when you're a sinner. I loved you. And for me, that, I don't know if it, it, it touches you to the point that it just amazed me. Not that God loved me first, but God loved me when I was a sinner. When I was in the darkness and living a lie, being deceived by the father of lies, when I was lost, he not only found me, but he said, I will forgive you of your sins. That is the love of Jesus Christ. I will redeem you from the darkness. I will speak the truth into your life that is full of lies. The word redemption means that someone had to redeem us, pay the price, the debt for us. And that is why we're redeemed by Jesus Christ. The minute he died on the cross for us, that should have been us. He overcame death. That should have been us, but we would have never overcame it. But because he did, now we have access to eternity. And this love that God showed us doesn't end here. And this is where we dive deeper and deeper, right? And now it doesn't st stop here. But God tells us, you know what? I want you to make this complete. So in John, 1 John chapter 4, verse 17, let's read one more verse together. Ready? Begin. This is how love is made complete among us, so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. So the last part of it all is he looked for us first. He loved us when we were sinners. And he said, you know what? I not only give you a power and remind you that the one in you is greater than the one in the world, but I want you to make my love complete by being like me. Right? So it, it's like, wow, how can we? Yes, you can because you're my children. You're created in my image. So sure you can. You can be like me. You will fall. I know you make mistakes, but you are me. And that is how his love becomes complete. So as we close up the series between uh, verses, love versus hate, we think it's easier to hate, but you know what, guys? I'm here to tell you it is way, way harder to hate because that is not a part of us. We were created in his image to love. Yes, Eve committed a sin, and that's why we're in this awkward position, like following our desires and our lust and trying to be like Jesus. But Jesus makes it very clear. You are in the light. You are in the truth. God has prevailed, and you are like me, and you will and you can love whatever I love. And so let's not let the deceiver uh, deceive us and making us into weak little human beings because we're above that. We will rise above all this and we'll rise with Jesus because he said, you will be like me and make my love complete. Let's pray. Father God, who are we that you create this beautiful universe so that we may dwell in it, so that we may enjoy it? And who are we that you look for us first? When we didn't even know you, when we were in the darkness as sinners, you came and looked for us and you redeemed us from the darkness. And you said, no longer will you be slaves. No longer will you be chained to your sins, but you will be free because I have redeemed you from the darkest pits. I have redeemed you from eternal damnation. And now you are my son. You're created in my image, and as the original intention of my plan, you will continue to love because the one in you is greater. I am in you. Father God, thank you so much. I hope and pray that although this world is changing and we're in a lot of uncertainty and chaos, but Father, thank you for being the rock in our lives. Thank you for being the certain, um, that certainty in our lives that will keep us firm. Father, bless us. Just keep us safe. Help us to love one another by making your joy complete. We love you, Father. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's praise God as we collect offering. You make all things work together for my good. You make all things Work together for my good. You make all things work together for my good. You make all things work together for my good. You stay the same through the ages. 
joy comes in the morning and when the oceans rage i don't have to be afraid because i know that you love me your love never fails your love never fails Dear God, thank you for letting us have this online worship during this difficult time and keeping all of us safe. I pray that you would help everyone to start off their school year strong and do well in school even though it's online. I pray that we would still worship you and praise you with our sincere heart in our own house with our own family, and that we will take something from Ms. Jin's sermon and apply it to our lives. Please keep everyone safe and positive. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning, everyone. As I mentioned, I hope you're doing well in school, and I think you're doing a great job, so keep it up. Next week, we're going to have Andrew do our prayer for us, and Jun Kyung will read the scriptures, and Daniel Jung will be doing our offering prayer for us. When you send in your clips, don't forget to make it loud and clear, and we hope to see you soon. Also, when you're recording, make sure your phone is horizontal and not um, vertical, okay? The teachers and I really want to thank you for keeping up with our AQMC Youth Netiquette. I know it's awkward, but thank you for having your camera on, actively participating, being precise with your answer, and muting your mics when you're not talking. Let's all say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.